Uh, dear colleagues, the Ukrainian crisis media center continues its work and our uh, briefing is on the uh, topic modular housing for uh, IDPs, the social getters or a step to better and our interlocutors are Igor Moroz, Olga Ivkina, Olga Semenova and Tatiana Serenka. Mm -hmm. Aid Center, how right to health, and I invite all our experts to the microphone. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to our press briefing today. We will discuss results of the monitoring of five model towns for IDPs in Dnipropetrovsk and Zaporizhia regions. Um, in uh, general, uh, the team of our uh, resource uh, center providing help to IDPs visited five uh, uh, modular housing uh, towns in uh, uh, Dnipropetrovsk, Pavlograd, Zaporizhia, uh, and our objective was to review the uh, situation with accommodation of ADPs to visit local uh, administrations who take care of these um, modular uh, housing towns and uh, to provide recommendations to uh, the authorities and uh, to provide recommendations for residents of that uh, modular housing uh, towns. Also, I would like to mention that our team tried to 
uh, stay uh, unbiased and uh, um, uh, uh, we tried uh, uh, not to interfere to the uh, mm, mm, communication between um, IDPs and uh, uh, local administrations. We simply tried to register all the issues and monitor the situation. And uh, now I would like to describe the results. We have analyzed uh, the age structure, the gender structure, and uh, came to conclusion that uh, uh, those modular um, housing towns are filled up by 60%, uh, 68%. Uh, and, and this is the result of a combination of objective and subjective reasons. Also, we came to conclusion that the majority of people living in those modular housing towns, they are uh, mainly satisfied with the, um, uh, their conditions, with their situations, uh, and uh, since uh, they are unable to uh, go back to their homes, Mm. And in the nearest future, they do not expect uh, they will go there. Uh, uh, why uh, this is uh, um, the the situation is like this? Because their wages uh, is are, are are not high, and uh, they cannot afford. Uh, 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 rent of uh, more expensive uh, accommodation. Uh, also, some people mentioned uh, that uh, they are afraid uh, uh, to go back home because uh, there are LPR and DNR um, uh, acting there. And 20% uh, mentioned that they simply are afraid of uh, uh, military actions. Um, military activities. Uh, also, um, uh, six, some 60 percent of uh, IDPs living in uh, those uh, small towns, uh, they uh, uh, said that there were no discrimination as to them, and uh, they um, felt rather comfortable in in this aspect. Uh, uh, thus, we came to conclusion that uh, the, the programs which uh, are uh, supported and uh, suggested uh, by a uh, local, uh, by international sponsors, um, uh, they won't uh, uh, be efficient uh, because uh, when uh, the uh, six months period for which they are granted uh, uh, rent payment for the housing when um, this uh, six months uh, expire they most probably won't be able to afford uh, renting that accommodation for that mm, that's why we are uh, uh, invite you to follow up uh, the report on our, on our web page and we invite you to comment right into our email address and uh, uh, now I would like to give the floor to Olga Semenova from NGO uh, uh, Center for Employment of Free People and she will describe the em uh, employment issue for the IDPs. Good morning. We had pilot survey on the employment in this town to define some social demographical characteristics of the candidates from these towns and define possible ways to help them. According to the results of these surveys, we can make uh, the following preliminary conclusions. Most of the families living in these towns consist of minimum one one in potentially employed person and they have one or two minors 
most of the people living there are in the social, uh, social uh, not defended groups of the populations, invalids, uh, single parents with small kids. Also, I would like to point out that that the number of uh, such population is less than a half of people and out of them the high percentage is of is of women with kids so in maternity leave in many cases the maternity leave is almost finished but at the moment they are not even thinking about looking for a job about the attitude to the level of comp of complexity to the employment issues among the among the citizens of these towns we can define two categories first category is a significant part of people who who during six or eight months can't find job and second less part thinks they can find a job quickly for example just in one month Uh, if you are looking for low qualified job without point attention to the salary. Also, there is a part of people who are thinking that if you are looking for the specialized job with better salaries, it, uh, is they can spend to up to two, three months for the uh, for this job. It depends a lot to the level of expectations of ADPs to their future job. In many cases, according to the survey, they would like to compare the situation they are now with their career and the salary level in in past before the war and unfortunately they com they compare it in neg in negative trend taking into consideration the situation they are now very often they think external factors are guilty in the in successful search to and also they say that the employees want to hire local population or younger people without taking into consideration IDPs. And more than a half say they are ready to work on, ele on ele elevation of their qualification because in the future it will make their chances for better job higher. According to the results of our survey, more than a half of people are ready to elevate their qualification. More than a half are ready to work with, with psychologists and some social employers. At the moment, the representatives of city of city employment center are, com are coming to these towns one or two times a week. Also, there are announcement boards in the towns, but according to surveys, these uh, these means are not very popular among the citizens. We think it's due to it's due to the state according to psychotraumatological events, and they need additional psychological help to adapt to current conditions. As I told you bef before, the citizens of this town are ready to work with psychologists, with social, with social employees, and their reaction to the contacts is positive. They point out the high level of, volunteering, of volunteer support. And we and we can say that we need additional service about the about the conditions of their living of their further social adaptation we need further surveys to uh, to develop optimum program how to help them thank you and now i would like to give the, f the floor the floor to uh, to the expert of uh, of aid center right to health, Tatiana Serenko, who will tell us about the conditions of living in these towns. Good afternoon. Maybe I would like to uh, to start my speech from from the following. In general, in general, in, in our country, in our organization, we have experience of working with families in complicated living conditions. And these IDPs families are those families who are in very complicated living condition. But the level of complexity of these conditions is rather tense. Uh, 
And speaking about people who are living in modular towns, there are specific nuances. From one side, we can see that people who left uh, left ATO area, they are really provided by the safe place of living. They have means to survive. But the part of them has some difficulties with adaptation. And it's, it has been a year already. They are living in modular towns. And it's time to, 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 tell, uh, to tell about that part of the families can't do it themselves. And they require some additional psychological, sociological help. And in these modular towns, this help can be adjusted rather effectively. But this aid should be composed from concrete plan. It should include surveys and investigations about which groups of population are living there, what is the general what are the general problems they have, and what are the unique problems of every family. It's very important to investigate the problems that every family had before they before they found themselves in this complicated uh, complicated life conditions connected to a war. Also, we need to consider the resources every family had before the war. And it's very important to take into consideration in, uh, consequences of the of the traumas. And it's very important to know that during this time of living of modular, of modular town, how the family was doing with all that. And only after that, we can compose concrete plan for every family. And according to this plan, to help every family, every person to survive these complicated life conditions. And it's very important while you are uh, while social employees and psychologists are helping the people to point the attention to every uh, that every identity has adult component, and we need to activate this part of the personality. We need to support this part of the personality, and it's very important to talk about responsibility of NGOs, responsibility of the country and responsibility of every person for what's going on in his life. If we share this responsibility, if we don't just uh, solve their problems without their participation, participation of every family and every person, the, the results will be more effective. And we can achieve more independence and adaptation of people in new life conditions. In this case, we can have integration of these families into new societies. In it's very important to use all the resources, all the resources these communities have already. Because the adaptation level depends a lot a lot on the fact how community is ready to accept them and how ready are they to the dialogue between between them and community also it's very important to take care it take care of, of the social life of these people it's very important not just block them into these modular towns we not to let them have communication just with the people uh, who are living next to them, who are also injured from, this, uh, from these situations. Maybe we need to involve, uh, to involve them into, into events of this community. Maybe they need to, to work more actively if they are able to do it. Maybe we need to involve them into some resources kinds of activity. To provide all that, it's, 
it's important that state companies are taking responsibility for that. And accepting parties should know which aim do we want to come. That we just want to provide people with housing and we need to prevent people for how long they can stay there because we want people to come back to normal life, active and interesting, at least in the future, that they will have in the, in the nearest few years. Thank you. And now I would like to give the floor to Olga Ivkina, coordinator of a contact center at the resource center, who will give the conclusions of our survey. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for your attention to our press briefing. And taking into account everything that my colleagues told you already, I would like to, s to tell that one of the aim of our survey was understanding the, this modular modular towns are they really provoke provoke the social social disability. What do we mean? We mean when person stops uh, adapting into new into new conditions and they stop making efforts to earn money. At the moment there are grounds to think after this survey, after the visit, that this factor is competitivity for humanitarian aid. And this fact is quite often in this in this community. What do I mean? Mainly it, uh, mainly it considers people who always had low, uh, low level of earning. And very often they were, they were living at the, at the survival limit. But taking into consideration how much time, how much time they stand there, it's high time for them to find job and earn their living. But as uh, as they still have humanitarian aid, there is a deficit of of this aid. It's very important to understand that in these modular towns there are people who are involved into this competitivity, of, but there are people who are not. And it's very important not to give some general terms. What is it? What is the sign of this competitivity we can find? First of all, if people show or they think that it is advantage if they have some certificate about disability or about some some diseases and when there are no and when there are no actions from their sign to improve their their living the paradox is the most successful is the person who has the less so now there is an interest to have the last, and the, and these people try. Uh, these people stops making some efforts to become independent. But also we need to take into consideration some external consequences. For example, their age, gender, and some external conditions uh, people have after after moving. Even in the most complicated situations, there are people who take part in this process and the people who don't. But it doesn't mean we need to cancel humanitarian aid at all. Otherwise, still there is a need, need of this help and a lot of people need it, but now we need to develop the principles of its giving. It's very important now for volunteers and for NGOs to reconsider the principles of giving humanitarian aid is in Ukraine because they need to understand the responsibility for what's going on with people. For example, such a principles could be address aid except for points of giving of points of giving the aid or help aimed with long term perspective except for some things that, that we need today today tomorrow. Distribution of information about humanitarian aid, because somebody needs this as advertisement, it also influences badly to the state of these people. More detailed, uh, more detailed, we can even consider these issues at the round table on 17th of December, and I invite all of you to. 
Thank you, Ola. Thank you, dear friends. Uh, oh, we are limited with the time for Q&A session, and please ask very briefly. Chernomorska uh, TV company. How many people did you interrogate and uh, mm, mm, uh, what is your feeling for how long time uh, these people may require assistance when they will be able to um, uh, uh, rely on themselves in maintenance? Thank you for the question. As of today, uh, um, uh, the general uh, amount of people living in that uh, um, uh, modular house towns uh, uh, mounted to 1700 and uh, we managed to um, uh, carry out a survey among 10 percent of uh, these people as for the prospects it's uh, um, difficult to predict. Uh, when we try to compare Ukrainian, uh, the conflict in Ukraine with other countries, uh, um, we see that uh, uh, in many countries, uh, the uh, conflict to, to several years to settle, to be resolved. And uh, here, everything depends on the um, fact whether the conflict is over. And everything depends on the moment when the conflict is over. And uh, then, after the conflict, uh, uh, people will need to uh, understand whether they uh, wish to go back or not. And uh, only in a situation of peace, uh, uh, we will see how many people will need uh, uh, external assistance uh, to um, uh, be able to maintain themselves. And uh, um, mm, then we will understand how many people won't be able to uh, go back to the places of uh, permanent residence because we believe that those modular towns should not be permanent. They, uh, it's temporary solution and uh, here much depends how the uh, international organizations will work uh, during next uh, year. A new person information center. My question is uh, uh, to Olga. What uh, are your recommendations for IDPs uh, to uh, improve their, uh, to be able to improve their life? We should not uh, uh, say generally that uh, um, IDPs have a party to their life. We should look at them individually. We should understand individually what are the needs of each IDP and uh, uh, um, to streamline main efforts to finding, finding uh, job for, for jobs for them. 